What is the deal, beautiful people? It's your boy Ramon, Lifestyles Defined. Let's talk about Windows on ARM. Something I don't think a lot of people will even know or care about. Me personally, I don't know if this is a big deal. I have some feelings. I don't know how to feel here. So essentially what's happening is we, we've we seen, is it HP? HP and Asus has got some hardware. I think Lenovo is going to announce something later this year. These guys has got full-blown Windows 10 running on Snapdragon 835 processors. Boom. <laughs> what that means is these... <laughs> these laptops and, and the HP one is like a two-in-one convertible, sort of like a Surface competitor. Uh, it's actually running mobile mobile infrastructure, mobile architecture. So it's, it's the Snapdragon 835. Yes, that is the same processor that's in your phone. Eight gigs of RAM and a solid state drive. I mean, I don't know what else to say here. From from what I can tell, the the only and this is the first thing you think about, right? How how is that how is that going to run on a day to day basis? Uh, from what I can tell, it looks to be the same. Applications may take uh, a half a second or a second longer to launch, but once they launch, the performance is the same. Uh, it's sort of some magic, some trickery. To what they're doing on the back end to make this happen they're pretty much emulating it and from the best of my ability uh this comes from like a windows 2000 windows nt type of thing where they would emulate 36 uh uh 36 is it is it x36 or x64 i think it's i think it's 36 bit applications were sort of uh emulated or was it 12-bit applications were emulated on a 32-bit processors something like that but they're they're definitely doing a version of emulation that allows it to run and we mean a low level emulation so uh whatever it is it seems that microsoft has it figured out uh qualcomm seems very uh they, they seem very i don't know they seem very excited about the whole project which is I, I don't get it really because if you look at Qualcomm, they've been playing in a mobile space for so long and clearly, you know, mobile is the future where, you know, these desktops will, desktops or the desktop PC is going to sort of dwindle in the background to, to very specific use cases. But I would expect in the not so near future, we're talking three, five years where your laptop isn't really a full like windows type of thing it's kind of a tablet with a keyboard which is why i've always admired the surface line i feel like that is the way of the future so it, it's interesting to me to see qualcomm making an effort to to get this rolling on like laptops and you could argue laptops is still mobile i, I guess fine whatever i can see that as well but the the big upside here is because that's the question, right? Why would you sacrifice the power of maybe a, a M core three or M core five for something like a Snapdragon eight thirty five? I mean, it's it's about the battery life. These guys, these guys are looking at like twenty hours of battery life. And if you take a gander at what Apple can do with the batteries on the iPads, I kind of believe that that's real. Uh, so it it just it furthers the confusion for me on how do we move going forward? What's real? Is is tablets and mobile phones really the future? But what if you can put the, the things that run those in a laptop in a traditional form factor? Well, is that the future? Like, I, I'm, I'm kind of so confused here. And then where does this leave Intel in all of this, right? Because, okay, fine. Those specific use cases I was talking about uh, content creators, you're gonna want to run your Photoshop, your your Adobe Premiere, your Final Cut, fine. Uh, but who's gonna just in a business in an enterprise level? Why would they uh, need Intel, right? You can run a Snapdragon, uh, what is it, 835, and a monitor, and you should be good there. So what does that do for Intel's core business? Of course, they're still gonna exist in servers and make Xeons and all that good stuff, but. I gotta wonder there, and then where does that where does that leave Intel when it comes to Apple? Because now I'm wondering, well, is Apple gonna pivot? Uh, because if you you look at the the reports and the benchmarks of that A10 in the new iPhone, uh, people 
people have lost their mind at how powerful that is. It's it's almost desktop and it is desktop class processing. And it is a lot stronger and more powerful than what the A35 is capable of, the Snapdragon. So you could say to yourself, if Microsoft can get Windows to run on a Snapdragon 835, couldn't that mean that Apple could just switch like the MacBook Air, for instance, or the regular MacBook to be uh, the A10 processor and, and not an Intel processor? Things start to get really interesting, right? If you think about it that way. So I have a lot of confusion about where this is going to lead us. Not quite sure, a lot of uncertainty. Would I personally buy a laptop with a Snapdragon 835? I mean, if they're promising that type of battery life, and always on connectivity with a SIM card, then yeah, you know, that's that's kind of dope. I may want to look into that. So I don't know, you guys let me know in the comment section below, what are the, the pros and cons of ARM running on Windows and this shift? Because now that Microsoft is behind it, uh, you gotta believe that the industry is gonna move. And, and you know, for years, Intel has been fighting to make their processors more power efficient. And I, I, you know, they've been getting modularly better, but I don't think they've succeeded yet. And here comes the super efficient guy with just enough power to run the processor. So the two worlds are sort of colliding here. What gives? Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. We got plenty more coming. My name is Ramon and I'm out of here. Peace. <laughs> Well, I guess. And the reason we started Lifestyles to Find is because uh, if we weren't on camera arguing about these things, the technologies, the phones, the iPhones, the Androids, the cameras, the games, we'd be on the phone arguing about it. <laughs> we'd be in each other's houses arguing about it. So why not just put it in front of a camera for everyone to enjoy it the way we do? That's what Lifestyles to Find is all about. We just...